Hey interwebs, it's Jackie K, and welcome to this week's KCast. Unfortunately, this is going to be a shorter one, and I'll probably be alternating between long and short episodes from now on. I've been thinking about exactly what to do for a while, and it's a minor part of why this KCast has been delayed. I think I got it down, though. Essentially, I will stick to half an hour to an hour KCast videos. On weeks there is no new Sun and Moon trailer, or some other source of big official news that isn't quite a leak. And on weeks that we do get that sort of news that I want to talk about, I'll be focusing most of my KCast time on my discussion and thoughts on said Sun and Moon news and information, and focus on having more of a 10-20 to 20 minute KCast episode that particular week. That is tentative to change, but... That's the plan I'm going to shoot for. Though if I need to focus on personal life stuff, which I'll get more into later, I may have to completely skip out on a kid cast one of those weeks. That much will play by ear though. As for the rest of my video plans, this is what I pretty much decided. It's been taking me a while to get Chippy Rubble Ziplash ready to go, between a lot of technical difficulties, like deleting the files for the next episode, thinking that I uploaded it already, and sound audios with the two episodes after that. But I think I'm finally getting it all in order. I just gotta overview the next Chibi Robo Zip Flash episode, make sure that's good, and then I can render it and upload it. And it should be up by no later than Wednesday. That is the ultimate goal. And either way, I'll have the following episode the following week. Because ironically, I had that one done sooner. Besides that though, videos are going to be on a, as I want to make them for the next couple weeks. Once I get caught up on Chippy Rebel Zip Lash, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to keep it consistent. I'm going to be putting more of my focus and effort on... Editing all the fi video files I currently have on my computer. Especially putting that focus more towards things like convention videos, Amiibo speed paints. Getting all those files taken care of so I can clear some space on my computer for future... So I can record other videos in the future. Plus, the past couple days, past few days even, I've been putting a lot of focus... On this project I got for kind of a pre-interview scan it made me realize how rusty I was with the software that's basically required for the type of work I want to go for so I'm just gonna throw it out there so it's not necessarily guaranteeing but ju just so I'm more of an ease of mind if I do decide to go through with it I might just put videos on the back burner and focus on refreshing my Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign skills. In combination with trying to get all the video files, miscellaneous video files, especially, edited, organized, and if they're appropriate for the channel, uploaded. Main series projects might be put on a back hold. I'll try to do it all, but... I just have to say it, in case it does happen, so I'm at ease of mind and don't feel the need to force myself to make another video to announce, hey, I can't make videos for a little bit. And it looks like I just barely managed to get everything under the 5 minute mark. Yay, I'm improving. Now we can get to some of the more fun stuff of the podcast. First and foremost... What I've been playing lately, well, as you might have guessed, it's still a lot of focus on Pokemon Go. In case you haven't caught from previous podcasts, I tried to play Pokemon Go 
more as a walking app and less as an actual game. Unfortunately, in order to get in-game currency, you have to actually do battles at the gym, which kind of puts a foil on my plans to use Pokemon Go as a walking accessory. On the bright side, I'm getting better with the gyms. I'm not sure if just people are less active because back to school season, or if I'm actually getting better, but I've definitely improved with gyms. For one, I think about a week or so ago, I held down a gym for 20 hours, essentially being able to get Poke coins from it twice, first time ever. I was able to hold it down with a Flareon. Granted, a lot of that was because I had it at just the right level, that I had a few water types that were under level and still able to defeat it with ease to raise my gym level up. And I'm pretty sure it's out of the three or so Pokestops that I have in one of the main areas I walk around in, that is probably the most isolated, hardest to get into without trespassing, etc. of the Pokespots. So it's a combination of luck and other things besides my own skill. But I'm still proud that I did it. And just a couple days ago, I was walking in that area and I was able to take out the Pokemon of all three gyms at once. I was going for my walk per usual and I noticed that they didn't really have too many Pokemon guarding them. I think a lot of times, especially the past couple of months, our Town's team has been Valor, and some Mystic team member just managed to get all the Poke spots. Couldn't have been more than a couple days ago, so the gyms were still young, and I felt a little bad, but at the same time, I really wanted those coins, and I even I don't really get too many opportunities to get them because my team's still a bit underpowered. So I actually walked to the spots had one, maybe two battles, and then Edger was able to claim them all and get 30 coins. And that's probably the most coins I've gotten from a single day. Heck, I'm lucky to get 30 coins in a single week. Maybe even 10, depending on if it's a really bad week or not. I was gonna say, I bet that the Pokemon are gone from the gym already, because I didn't put my strongest Pokemon on there. I didn't bother trying to level up the gyms at all. I figured they were just going to get taken over again. Funny enough, it's been about two hours from then now. And I'm looking here, and I still got three Pokemon stationed at gyms. So yay, progress. I highly doubt that any of them are still going to be around by the time I can get more coins from the gyms. But I will be freaking out about it on Twitter if that ends up being the case. You can bet that one. So, actually, let me take a second and pull up Pokemon Go on my app. Take a look-see. Oh, yes! I'm only one candy away from having this Geodude evolve. Now, I never hear people talk about using a Graveler or a Gome at a gym at all. So, it's probably not that great of a Pokemon, but... I don't have too many ground types. I live in an area where ground types are really rare. And in fact, I got this Geodude from an egg, and... I'm only so impressive with it to the point that I want to raise enough candies to evolve it. Because it's got really good stats. I got it appraised and good old Sparks telling me that it can battle with the best of them. Its best quality is an HP and that HP stat is the best that it's ever seen, no doubts about it. So it's gotta be at least in the 90 percentile of IVs. For those who don't know, those are individual values that kind of separate your average Pokemon from the great Pokemon. So, since it's the best ground type I'm going to run into for a while, I'm going to raise it up, evolve it, maybe evolve some other Pokemon, and we'll be good to go. I'll, You know what, I'll probably throw some pictures on YouTube of my team, but let me pull up my Pokemon and just show you what I got. I don't got anything too strong despite being level 19 because I am waiting to evolve Pokemon until I get that Geodude enough candies. Because I'm going to use the last lucky egg I have to 
allow everyone to the evolution level they need to be at. Boy, that does sound wrong. You know what I mean. You can involve everyone at once, make you the most out of it like I can. And hopefully when I reach level 20, I'll get another one. And if not, it's going to be a long time since I, before I go to another convention. So it won't be that big of a deal if I can't use a lucky egg for a long time. So let's see, let's pull up the combat power of some Pokemons here. My strongest is Mystic Victorian with a CP of 1075. The second is the Jolteon with 875. A Hypno with 734, Pidgeot with 708, a Tauros with 691, my Flareon. Oh, I also have a second Jolteon and Hypno in between all that. A Jinx at 630, a Gloom at 628, though I think it's already going to be replaced by an... Oh wow! I was going to say by an Oddish. But I think I caught a new one that's even stronger than that. So yeah, even though I got 82 Oddish candy saved up. If that Oddish has better IVs than the Oddish I was planning to evolve, I'll definitely evolve that. I think, either way, I think I'm going to evolve an Oddish so I have a stronger Gloom before evolving into a Vileplume. <sighs> Which just stuck because it's keep delaying the inevitable. And I have some other Pokemon, but they're barely above 500. They're definitely underneath 600, so I don't even know if they're worth mentioning. I guess I should note they have a bet on that at 625. But yeah, when I start evolving Pokemon, my team's going to get drastically better. And actually, I'm already halfway up in level, so I'll hit the big 2-0 in no time. And then, from what I hear, the real grind begins. With all that talk about Pokemon Go, though, there's actually some Pokemon Go news I can bring up. First, between podcasts, Pokemon Go Plus has officially came out. And I actually ordered it from GameStop when they relisted them. It's been about a week at this point, so I'm hoping that it comes any day now. I'm super soaked, probably more than most people are about to go plus, because this is basically invented for someone like me. Someone who really is more concerned about actually walking the distance and using Pokemon Go as an incentive to go on walks, rather than actually playing Pokemon Go. You can bet your toonies that I will be informing you guys on the next KCast as soon as I get a chance to get the Pokemon Go Plus and try it out for myself. Let you know if it's worth the money, at least if you have a play style similar to mine. The other major thing happened a couple days ago, Pokemon Go did get a new update, though I consider it more of a minor one. Nevertheless, there are a few new features, so I figure I'd bring them up. For one, the capture locations they took out are coming back. That's not the tracker, guys. That is... This is a little hard to explain if you don't already know about its existence, but... Essentially, when Pokemon are caught, back in the older ver versions of Pokemon Go, you could actually pull up the Pokemon, scroll down, and actually see where you caught it. It would actually pull up a Google Map locator of where you caught your Pokemon. And I had mixed feelings when they took it out. They apparently took it out because of bugs, but I didn't even realize that said bugs exist. I thought they took it out for like identity sake purposes in that, because I've heard stories about... Well, I've heard this one story about a guy getting caught cheating because her girlfriend looked up on her phone and saw that he caught a Pokemon at his ex place. Uh, relationship problem. It's a good thing I don't have to worry about them because I don't have any ever. <laughs> but yeah, if I thought it took it out for a reason like that. And I had mixed feelings. It kind of sucks 
because sometimes I would name a Pokemon based on a place I caught it in a personal memory I make in the area. And the, taking out the location feature made that harder. But on the other hand, I felt a bit more secure about my privacy in that when it didn't keep track. Just things like that. But apparently they're bringing it back. And it's officially on my phone now because I noticed as I came back from my walk today that it was updated. So yeah, I now have the new Pokemon Go version. Oh, and the other notable thing that came out of the Pokemon Go update is that the Go Plus will now work if you use an incense. I'm glad I didn't get the Go Plus yet. Because I could have sworn that was already a feature. But apparently, in the past, if you put up an ascent and then pulled up your Go Plus, it wouldn't actually do anything extra. But now it does. So that's all good. And besides that, there was just some minor bug fixes. As for other games I've been playing, I've revisited Pokemon Blue on my 3DS. It's been a while since I started playing picking it back up this week. But I managed to go from having one gym badge to three and getting ready to go to Rock Tunnel. So hopefully that will be done by the time Sun and Moon comes out. I actually got a few playthroughs on different Pokemon games that I gotta finish up and it would be nice to have them done before Sun and Moon. They are games I play just for pleasure though so no pressure on that. And I also been playing Smash Brothers on the 3DS. I know that's weird, but for some reason I have a lot harder time sitting down and playing a game on a console than I do sitting down and playing it on a handheld. So it's just more comfortable this way. And with my new 3DS I was able to actually dust off a lot of the amiibo I had sitting around and actually use them for more than just staring at and being collectibles. It was the reason I got into amiibos in the first place, you know amiibo features and all, but at least I made a hobby out of it. And speaking of said hobby, I have been making some progress with custom amiibos lately. I pretty much showed off everything last week, I haven't started anything new, but I did finish up the duck hunt and the maple amiibo. And I'm actually really excited with how the maple one came out. I was originally going to make it to sell or donate. But I might have to get another Mabel. Because now I want to keep it for myself. <laughs> and besides that, I am just wrapping up with my Mac Champ Skylander and uh, Tom Nook. I'm making it into Teddy. I realized that the eyes were the wrong color, so I had to redo that. And I'm not as happy with the way the eyes look now, but I'm hoping when I... It's only got the white layer and it's still got some gray and black to go on top of it. So I'm hoping that it looks a bit nicer by the time it's done. And since those are just pretty much close to done, the Mac Champ one just needs a couple more layers of color on its belt and to be cleaned up. And the Teddy one needs to be cleaned up in the things I mentioned before. Both those will be ready to go. And since I'm recording my painting as I'm going through them, that should mean I have two Amiibo speed paints record and I just have to finish adding them at a time. In fact, I actually have have them rendering now because what I do for those speed paints is I dump all my recordings onto the computer, speed it up as much as I can, render it, speed as much those files up as much as I can and then re-render that. And I repeat that process until the video is a reasonable length. So yeah, Projects tie, videos tie into painting, painting ties into game playing, and everything connects whether I want to or not. <laughs> I suppose I can wrap up this KCast by talking about the little bit of Amiibo news I was able to dig up. No new figures or new gameplay features or anything super sustainous like that. But we have gotten a sign of life that they haven't forgotten about the last three Smash Brothers Amiibos. Guys, they're not dead. 
What we got though was a teaser shot of the Bayonetta Amiibo teaser. They didn't even show off the whole Amiibo figure. It was literally a teaser for a figure that we know exists but they just haven't made yet. This was done through the Platinum Games website. Not their American version though. So unfortunately I had to rely on Google Translate while looking this up. And the only information of relevance I could find was that it mentions that they're getting the Amiibos together for Bayonetta 2's 2nd anniversary. What that entails, will that mean they're released on Bayonetta 2's anniversary? Or just doing it around the time in honor of it? Will there be a bundle? Who knows? All we know is that they haven't forgotten about it. Sorry, Corn. Sorry, Cloud. Maybe someday you'll show signs of life as well. I'm really hoping that I can get back into working on custom amiibos. Or at least put a good time and get a lot of them done. Because I do want to fill up the store envy store I have with more customs. Make a few custom for charity events in the future. At least as soon as I narrow down that. Have them for other things. A lot of stuff like that. If you want to support my work. And if I am going to be making more customs in the, anytime soon. I might need a little support. But no pressure. Just if you like what I make you have the opportunity to buy it. A good place to do so would be my store envy account. That would be J-A-C-K-I-T-K dot store MV dot com. And they only vaguely mentioned that I might need to actually sell some Amiibos before I buy more Amiibos. I can't afford to buy more Amiibos before actually selling some of the ones I have. I do have a few sitting around. So I still got quite a few Amiibos to go before I run out. But I really would want, love to sell a couple of them. Sometime in the future. It's a good way to support the work I do. Or if you're just interested in the custom I create. You have an opportunity to get a few of them. I would love to come up with ways to support. Other types of work I do online. But since I don't want to. Ask for money unless I can give something in return. I'm not quite sure what the best way to do that is yet. I have ideas but I'm not even sure if the interest is out there. So I'm not going to throw those ideas unless there's an interest in supporting me. If you somehow managed to sit through all this and enjoyed it, I encourage you to like this on either Podbean or YouTube, depending on where you watch it from. And if you want to check me out on social media, I already keep up with updates so you know why I don't upload a particular week. Or see the latest shots of my custom amiibos. There's a whole bunch of links for you depending on what you're interested in and what sites you use. So let me stream from the ones that first come to my head. There's a store MV account that I mentioned before under Jacket K. If you want to just follow any endless rambling. Or just only have a Twitter account and... Are willing to bear with my best and my worst. You can follow me at Jacket Stuff, J A C K I T S T U F F. If you want exclusively video updates and nothing else, I encourage you to follow me on my video account for on Facebook. That is J A C K I T K L P S. Jacket KLPs. Yes, I remember the actual URL for once. <laughs> but if you'd rather follow me for art, you can just use J A C K I T K at DeviantArt for Facebook cosplay and custom meeple work is under the Facebook page of J A C K I T K A Y. And that's also what my Instagram account is under. And those are all the things coming to mind right now. Maybe someday I'll have an easy way to organize all the links in one page or site. But today is not that day. 
tomorrow's looking more towards video editing. And I'm not, things aren't looking too bright about the day after, but someday. I have been Jackie K with this week's K Cast. As I stare into the Smack Champ's soul, I hope to see you all next time. Okay? <laughs>